Next uh, presentation comes from Damian Alvarez of Ulick Supercomputing Center, where he'll be discussing maximizing consistency in XXL heterogeneous facilities, the JSC way. Damian, how are you? All right. I'm good. And you? Excellent. All right. So let's get started then. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll talk a little bit about how we do things at, uh, at JSC. Uh, regarding trying to keep consistency on uh, across the whole facility. So that, that expands not just a single system, but all the systems we have um, at, the, at the data center. So, um, uh, right, so to, well, just to um, get it started or, or to, let's say, to uh, lay out the, the foundation of, of, uh, of what the talk is about, uh, I think we can start describing what is a typical procedure when, when you get a new system. So there's typically a procurement and with uh, or after that procurement, uh, you get um, an offer from a given vendor uh, that includes a set of things, right? So you have the computer nodes, you have the service nodes, storage is typically included on the offer as well. Um, and as part of it, you also get the, um, the software stack of, um, of, of that particular vendor, right? So... Uh, I don't know, with, with HPE, you get uh, the Shasta uh, software environment. Now they're using Kubernetes before they would use using something else. Uh, with other, other vendors, you get other stack. Um, so for us, that that's a little bit different. Um, and well, and that gets the deployment phase, right? So for us, uh, that is a little bit different uh, on the sense that um, we, um, over the years, for different reasons, we ended up uh, building our own um, stack, so to say. Uh, from the ground up, and um, yeah, so that's that's more or less what uh, what the talk is about. Um, so to to showcase how um, our environment is and how we came to uh, to that, uh, we can start with a, a brief uh, timeline of of Ubels. Uh, Ubels is our biggest system, and uh, well, it all started in 2018. Uh, the, so the installation started at the beginning of the year. And uh, roughly, yeah, a few months later, the system enter uh, enter production, right? So Uvils, um, or what Uvils was at that time, uh, and and we have to see Uvils as a dynamic system that moved and changed over the time. Um, so what Uvils was at the time was 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 basically this. So and uh, these specs are not important. I don't want to focus on the on the particular specs for for this talk. But we basically have um, a relatively large set of nodes. Uh, uh, based on on uh, into CPUs, uh, no accelerators there, and uh, and a more or less simple traditional architecture, right? Uh, it was based uh, at that time on uh, Infiniban EDR, uh, 100 gigabits per second. Um, yeah, so that's that's more or less about it, right? We also had a few other nodes uh, equipped with uh, with NVIDIA uh, GPUs. And that's what we used uh, as a let's say, experimentation platform for uh, for future systems, uh, future well, present now, future at at that time. Um, good. So we had this system with a set of nodes, and uh, and and we integrated that on on an Infiniva network that looked more or less like this. So we ended up on having. Uh, yeah, roughly uh, 2,600, 2,700 endpoints, uh, if you take into account the, the service nodes. Um, and the network was divided uh, following ways. So it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a fat tree topology with pruning at uh, uh, two to one pruning at the, at the L1 uh, switches. We do have 120 L1 switches, 120 L2 switches, and 48 top level switches connecting, uh, connecting all the two level switches. And the whole system is organized in, in 10 different uh, cells. Each cell, on this case, is, um, is a set of three racks. Um, two of these racks uh, contain the, 
uh, the compute nodes, and there's one one middle rack with uh, with the switches. So that was more or less the, the design architecture uh, that um, uh, that, or, that that we uh, we we got at that time. Um, important at this point is to know that the uh, at that moment we had the service nodes, so the masters, the slurm. Um, so all, 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 all that kind of, um, of management um, nodes, login nodes, um, they were all connected to the L1 switches on, on the cells. Um, right. Uh, so that's more or less how the network look like. Um, so you see that it's, it's really, well, it's, it's a relatively complex network. Um, and uh, you can see here, well, basically the, um, uh, oops, the um yeah the, the the compute nodes connected to the switches you you can see here the, the GPU nodes and and the and the top level switches here um so that is already a sizable system I would say um and uh, yeah uh, but uh, we are not taking into uh, storage into consideration yet so when we put the storage into consideration what we have or what what we bring into the picture is is just um which is our, our storage cluster, which is connected via this gateways here. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see my pointer, I hope you do. Um, so it's, it's connected through this gateways here uh, to, the, to the InfiniBand network. Um, why is that connected to, do, uh, to that? Uh, well, because Just is a, is a storage system that is, uh, is Ethernet based. Um, and uh, and it is um, it is already the first reason why uh, typically uh, deployments with us uh, differ a little bit from from uh, from all the simpler deployments. And I'm not implying that we are the only uh, place or the only site that has complex deployments. I'm quite sure that that uh, many other members on this round also have quite complex uh, deployments. Uh, but in any case, so um, so this is this is what we um, what our system has. So basically, the the GPFS, uh storage uh, connected to a, a to an Ethernet uh, fabric, and that Ethernet is connected to the uh, um, to the fabric of of all the other systems we have uh, we have on our side. So uh, you already have here like a kind of a sneak peek of, of what it's coming. Uh, until now, I was just talking about the Jubus cluster, but um, uh, connected to it is, or connected to, well, to, to storage, we also have the Jubus booster, we have Eureka DC, uh, the Eureka booster and Yusuf, and we have other smaller systems. Um, so that already kind of complicates the, uh, the deployment and, and, uh, and, and, and then the setup on, uh, on the whole facility. Um, now moving on on how the service island looks like or used to look like um, on the US cluster. Uh, so we have this set of, of nodes, uh, uh, master nodes, some managers, login nodes, visualization, etc. So monitoring nodes, nodes for, for Slurm and nodes for, manage, for managing the, the different cells or the islands. Um, in this setup, um, as an side effect of, um, of uh, um, connecting to storage, uh, to an Ethernet-based storage, um, that implies that, uh, that our system has a strong reliance on IP over IV, um, uh, which, well, uh, which has uh, certain, certain implications. Um, and uh, yeah, so the service node are connected to the L1 switches. That's something that I mentioned already. And, um, and because of some certain customizations that we have on, on our site uh, or, or, or yeah, certain policies we have, so to say, the software stack provided by the vendors is, uh, is rather minimal. So we have um, uh, the rack management software. Um, uh, we have Infinivant uh, monitoring. And then we have uh, node provisioning and health checking, resource management, and DNS. And that is what is provided by, by the vendors or by the partners that participated on, on the system. Uh, but everything else, and by everything else, I really mean everything else, is, um, uh, is basically developed from the ground up uh, on, on our division. Uh, so now moving on with... Um, 
with a timeline uh, of Uvals. Uh, so we had at some point in 2019, uh, the kickoff meeting for that project. Then of course, Corona came making everything more complicated and uh, the installation phase of, of the Jubal's booster started. So what is the Jubal's booster? Um, the Jubal's booster is, um, is a separate system at this point or at the point of deployment was a, was a different system. Um, larger, larger in footprint, uh, smaller in number of nodes. Um, so it's it's heavily based on GPUs. It has a much ne uh, much more complex um, node design, uh, including um, uh, four uh, InfiniBand HTAs uh, per node. Uh, this time we have HDR two hundred. It's not DDR, so that's that's uh, one, one change in generation already. And um, and that is integrated in in a different structure. Um, so that that implies, or these numbers imply, uh, basically a, a larger number of of uh, L1 and L2 switches. It's also a different kind of topology. It's a dragonfly topology, not not fat tree. Um, even though we have less number of compute nodes, we have more um, uh, endpoints, and uh, well, so the network uh, setup it's it's already more complicated, uh, despite the fact that we have. Um, uh, less uh, less compute nodes. Uh, the service nodes, uh, and that's the thing that, that has been important for us. Uh, the service nodes are uh, are connected to the last rack uh, on the last cell. So the last cell, it's one rack is compute, the other half is um, is is uh, is used for for service uh, service nodes. Um, yeah, so that's more or less how the the network of the system looks like um, when it's uh, isolated or as it was at, at this point. And we connected it again to just um, via um, via Skyways. Uh, so that, that's the new gateway uh, appliance from, uh, from, from Mellanox, well, new at that time. Um, and it was, it was not even uh, publicly available. Um, good, uh, so uh, we had a, a set of service nodes uh, for, for this system as well. Uh, the important to note here is that here we had um, uh, Ceph servers, which we didn't have uh, in the, uh, let's say, in the original uh, Jubels or on, on the Jubels class at the time of deployment. Um, good. Then everything else is, is fairly similar to what uh, the Jubels cluster had before. But now things keep progressing. Um, so... Uh, uh, before the Jubal's booster enter production, we actually merge both cluster and booster. So now they are they are actually um, a single system. Uh, so when when the booster enter production, uh, it was not in uh, in an isolated manner. Uh, so that implied a number of changes on on how we manage the the infrastructure. Um, the main changes I, I tried to summarize them here. Um, so from the cluster part, we took the um, uh, some of the nodes that were no longer needed or or um, had a, a reduced importance, and uh, so we just demoted them to to be simply GPFS uh, quorum nodes. So the masters were no longer masters. The Sunday managers are no longer uh, managing the subnet. Uh, they are simply uh, being part of the of the GPFS quorum um, for the local cluster. Uh, yeah, for the for the local cluster, and we have two GPFS clusters on um, on uh, on Jewels. Uh, one just for the cluster part, one for the booster part. Uh, what I mean by GPFS cluster here, I don't imply storage. I mean the local let's say entity that is importing the file system from uh, from Just. Um, good. Then we had the monitoring nodes as well, uh, decommissioned and. Um, and uh, the approach that we had until that moment was uh, based on um, uh, on containers and, and local storage. So each node pair, uh, so let's take the masters, for instance, there were two masters and we had one master container and we were moving the master container from one, uh, one of the vermetas to the other one over the, the, local, uh, the local storage. Now that was at that moment um, uh, a little bit of um, uh, yeah, um, manual effort, so to say. 
And um, so we moved everything. And, and that was true not just for the master. That was true for Sloan. That was true for the island managers, uh, for, uh, for um, uh, the monitoring uh, services, et cetera. Um, so we move all that that was uh, based on, on local storage, and we put that, uh, all those containers in, uh, in individual uh, Ceph RVDs. Uh, for that, we had to, of course, uh, well, uh, procure um, uh, tangy cards for, uh, for the Ceph storage uh, to, well, to, to equip uh, the rare metals that we, that we had until that point. Uh, we had to lay out the network uh, for Ceph, et cetera. Um, uh, what else? Um, uh, then, uh, after, after the merge, um, the master nodes, uh, monitoring and the standard managers that we had for the booster, those are now used for the whole system. So it's not, it's not on the booster. It's, uh, it's for, for, for the, the entity that comes from merging both. Um, and, um, we kept the uh, the slum nodes for uh, the US cluster. That those are the ones that are serving now, um, both cluster and booster. Um, now, in Infinibon Fabric, uh, we merge both um, on the uh, uh, using the the, the top level uh, switches from the from the fat tree on on the cluster part of the system, um, and that is connected with uh, two hundred links uh, with uh, with Dragonfly. Um, that's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 10 per cell, uh, 10 links, uh, yeah, 10, 10 links per cell are connected to, um, uh, to top level switches. And we had, of course, to adapt, uh, the whole setup, uh, the chain rating setup and, and, well, and, and there was a few other things, uh, including making sure that, uh, open same filoba was working properly. Uh, so it was, well, the whole thing was, was, uh, was on its own, um, a challenge. Um, on the Ethernet side of things, uh, as I mentioned before, we moved to, to Ceph, uh, which means that the whole Ethernet infrastructure of, of, the, of the US cluster, which was originally uh, contained within the, uh, uh, the Ethernet infrastructure that the vendor provided, that all of that has been moved into, uh, into our own uh, infrastructure. Uh, I'm talking, of course, uh, north of the north of the islands uh, or north of the of the cells, um, not not the points connecting the compute nodes to the to the island managers. Good. So that's how the fabric looks like today. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's quite a monster. Uh, I'm sure there are some fabrics that are uh, that are bigger than this or more complex, but uh, this one is <laughs> is already an interesting and a challenging one. Uh, for one thing, because of, well, many different things, but it it is a, a mix of of um, different generations of Infinivan. We have here FDR, EDR, HDR 100, 100, and HDR 200. FDR comes from the from the gateways that we had on the we still have on the cluster part. Um, at that moment, there was no no other technology available for for bridge um, the gap between uh, Infiniband and Ethernet. So we had at the end uh, four different flavors of uh, of Infiniband uh, on this network. It's a lot of ports, lots of gateways, lots of switches, uh, etc. Um, now to make things uh, even more interesting, now for storage, we don't have um, not just just, uh, we also have um, uh, IME, uh, what we call the HPSC. It's, it's basically a flash-based uh, storage that is connected to uh, two or three biggest, uh, biggest systems. And that is connected directly to the Infiniband fabric of, of each one of them. Good. Uh, so I talked already, or I mentioned briefly, some of the other systems we have. Uh, we have Eureka DC, which is already on its own uh, a large system as well. Um, and I'm going to go into details uh, of this system. Um, but but it, it follows a similar concept uh, to uh, to Jubels, uh, on the sense that it is connected and managed uh, together with um, with a different uh, uh, with a different module. Uh, uh, which was uh, which was deployed uh, quite a bit before Eureka DC was actually deployed, and uh, it's it's a KNL system with Omnipath um, network, and those are connected via uh, via two hundred uh, Infiniband and Omnipath gateways. So with this system as well as with uh, with with Jubels, 
it's possible to have uh, MPI jobs that, that span across, uh, across the whole system. Uh, good. And then we have a number of other smaller systems. We have Yusuf, it's a smaller one with 200 nodes. Uh, yeah, HDFML, Yusea, uh, we have test cells, we have Jarvis, uh, you name it. Um, so now, um, how do we move to, uh, or how would we manage consistency on, on this environment? And um, so that, um, uh, that, that's more or less the, the interesting part, even though there was a, a, a long build up uh, to, to come to this point. So we have a number of constraints uh, and, and the solution was basically to develop our, our own stamp from, from the grown up. The principles we use to, um, for, for this solution is to try to homogenize where possible, use the same EOS. I mentioned yesterday that we moved to, to Rocky uh, with, in my opinion, with, uh, uh, with, with great success. So we haven't seen any, any problems since then. Uh, use same schedulers and compilers, same MPIs, same high, level, uh, high availability strategies was pos were possible, same monitoring, um, etc. So basically, when we have a new system, we can we can take uh, the setup that we already prepare and uh, just tweak a little bit the configuration uh, to put I don't know the right. Um, uh, interfaces uh, pointing to well to the right places, having the right IPs, um, deploy the right services, uh, that that kind of thing, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, we use two things for that. Uh, taking a look at the system side, uh, we rely a lot on, on Ansible, and um, yeah. So I think automation is is key, and we're set up. Um, and uh, and on the user side, uh, we use CC Build. As I'm, I was very happy to see that Kenneth was uh, was uh, on, on on this front as well, and uh, so uh, yeah. So I, I can just say that we've been using uh, ECB for a long time, and we we're still planning on on using it uh, for for many years to come. So uh, on the system side, that's more or less how how a solution looks like. Um, we we have all in Ansible, and so all developments we do and we have for one system became uh, available immediately for all the systems. Of course, sometimes you need to configure and tweak things, but uh, but uh, if you tweak a role of uh, because you discover something on one one system, then it becomes or the fix becomes made, uh, immediately available uh, for all the others. Um, and uh, well, regarding services that are not uh, HA capable natively. We rely uh, mostly on uh, on PCS and a shared storage. Um, on the big systems, we use Ceph. On Yusuf, we use uh, NetApp, and and uh, we put that together uh, and uh, and we put uh, LHC containers on top. So that that looks like a, like a, a native node, uh, so to say, and and that that, get, that gets moved uh, more or less transparently and, and automatically. Um, Without without much fuss, so we use that for the slow, and we use that for the master containers, for the island managers, uh, for the golden clients. So the compute, uh, we don't manage the compute. That's one of our partners is uh, is doing that, the the putting of the compute. But we do provide a blueprint uh, uh, for for these images. Uh, we have. Um, um, uh, a container for the Infinivan monitoring tool we have uh, for kickstarting um, uh, new service nodes and for all the uh, rack management software. Uh, now for monitoring, we rely mostly on, on a combination of Prometheus with Alarm Manager, Grafana and Loki, and uh, a typical ELK stack. Uh, that is at the moment run uh, with, with Palma. It's basically it's the same setup than uh than the the other services um but uh but this time relying on Polman, not not on LXC. um good then we have for the ha cap capable services that are um, native capable of these things of of ha uh the sun manager of course um uh, we use that together with uh, selfs so the active um, Sun Manager is dumping uh, its database to uh, to a shared file. So when the uh, when the passive one uh, takes over, it can it can read directly uh, that state and don't have all the phase of client re-registration that sometimes can have a, a nasty effect on on the, on the IP over the V network. Uh, we just keep alive D for uh, um, um, for gatewaying 
between the computes and uh, an internet or the login nodes. And we have, of course, well, uh, spectrum scale that, that of, it's of course uh, on its own HA capable. Um, the part of the stack that is managed by, by our panels is, is basically this. Uh, so IBMS uh, and uh, so the, the Infinibar monitoring, uh, the rack management, and the, the Ethernet, uh, the in rack uh, Ethernet configuration uh, is done by Atos. Uh, DNS setup, compute booting, and health checking, and the part of the resource manager, not the scheduler, but the resource manager part of things is, uh, is managed by, by Partech. Uh, good. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we do that with uh, with Ansible. A typical structure is uh, on our setup is having one playbook per system and and put node groups in in the different place. Um, uh, yeah, and then on one directory per system that includes the inventory and and the configuration for that system. Um, that means, for instance, for Jubels that we have an inventory with uh, 317 lines of YAML code, 57 hosts uh, with a total of, of almost 2,000 uh, lines of YAML code, and 40 groups uh, uh, with uh, yeah, with almost 9,000 lines of, of YAML code that contains the configuration. Now, this looks oh, that could look like a, like a lot. Um, in reality, most of it are actually just dictionaries. So you just define uh, uh, different variables for different for different hosts on the on the system. So it, it's large, but it's not complex. Um, just some numbers regarding uh, the amount of work that has been put in into that, and, and those are numbers that I collected yesterday. Uh, so we've had roughly 15,000 commits from 20 different people, some people that have left the division already. Um, uh, yeah, so we, we have 25 play, playbooks in total used for 70 different clusters or services. Uh, we use Ansible as well for, for configuring uh, things like uh, like the central LDAP and, and uh, things like that. Um, we had a significant number of roles, most of them uh, greeting in-house to manage accounts, to manage, I don't know, uh, the, the DSM configuration, to manage them, you name it. Uh, everything or almost everything is in there. Uh, yeah, a lot of JAMA files, a lot of, a lot of uh, lines of code. So it doesn't make sense to, to go in detail over the numbers. Um, Good. On the user side, um, so until now was uh, everything on system side. On user side, uh, as I mentioned, we rely on, on ECVL uh, for a long time. I think that what is important to mention here or how we do things is that we rely basically on a hierarchical uh, model naming scheme. That means that with the user logs in, uh, they just see uh, they just see the packages that are available on the on the bottom layers, uh, that's the GCC core and system. That's that's basically like a, uh, an installation layer with respect to the to the OS, and that's also part of the reason why we could migrate, uh, for instance, from CentOS seven to CentOS eight or from uh, from uh, CentOS to Rocky without uh, without major issues, because we have a lot of a lot of the uh, ROM packages installed at, at, at that layer. Um, uh, good. Um, then. As a user, you can load a compiler, and then when you load the compiler, you can see all the packages that are installed uh, with that particular compiler, and those are the three compilers that we have uh, right now. We have others installed in the past, which are still available, but are in a separate stage. And then we have this, uh, this set of, of MPIs, basically, uh, yeah, uh, Parisish MPI, Open MPI, and Intel MPI. We also have Bull MPI in, um, uh, in Eureka DC. But that's that's very very similar to to OpenMPI. Um, good, we have a set of customizations. Uh, for instance, for uh, configuring MPI or for configuring UCX, we have our own uh, models. Um, our stack is available on on GitHub, um, and yeah, so we have a, a number of other tweaks um, that probably doesn't make sense to to go too deep into them. If anybody has any any question, I'm, I'll be I'll be happy to answer. Um, Right, uh, regarding numbers uh, on this side of, 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 of managing consistency, uh, we have um, uh, for this particular stage, uh, 3,800 commits. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, uh, 34 authors. Uh, so that's a cross-sectional team uh, in the, 
uh, in the institute, and that involves uh, us as admins, so it involves people from support, domain experts, etc. Uh, yeah, so a number of compilers, MPIs, and and uh, and a sizable number of packages uh, installed consistently with a consistent view and a consistent structure in all the systems. Um, yeah. So to summarize, we do have, I think, a quite uh, complex environment with a lot of different vendors, networks, um, architectures uh, that are interacting with each other. Uh, we do have cutting edge deployments. Uh, so uh, some of the things that the Jupyter Booster has, for instance, they are not so new now, but they were quite new a year and a half or two years ago when the system um, was deployed. Um, and yeah, so we do not have, um, due to these constraints, we do not have um, a lot of out of the box solutions. Um, so we basically, well, uh, build it from the ground up and uh, made it in a way that allows us to deploy it easily on, on, uh, on all the systems we have and uh, hopefully on, on future systems. Um, good, so I think that's all. So uh, thank you. And if there's any question, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Damien. We do have one uh, question from Joseph. He's asking about the booster, if it's an, an Atos node with GPUs and not the Heidelberg device, right? Uh, the booster, which one? The Eureka booster or the Ubers booster? Uh, if assuming it's a Ubers booster, that is an Atos system, uh, but it's a, it's a Sequana 2 uh, architecture is not Supana one like uh, like the the cluster, um, but yeah, but that's basically an, an Nvidia, um, an auto system with Nvidia GPUs. Okay, thank you. I'll pass it on to Hussein. Hussein, do you have any questions on your side? Um, well, Damien, I have a question that's regarding. Uh, it's it's not a technical question. This is like. Uh, um, how do you see the future? It's related to HPC. I mean, I can see that you are more moving towards oriented, typical HPC center, you know, um, um, high speed network, a typical um, workload, um, typical HPC traditional one. Um, do you see any changes, especially that we can see this conversion between cloud and HPC? We have seen a lot of changes going on in the market. Do you see that? comes to you maybe the short or mid mid range time oh definitely um now i'm, I'm i do not have a cloud background so that's why my my talk was mostly focused on the hpc part of things because that's that's where i came from and that's uh, being honest that's that's by far our biggest chunk today um but uh, the requirements for cloud uh, they are i mean the or users are pushing us uh, for for this kind of stuff so in user for instance we have one part of the system of these 200 nodes uh a sizable part of it are, are actually dedicated to uh to an open stack cloud uh the rest is hpc uh in the future um there's there's a number of cloud technologies that we would like to adopt um um, on the service side of things, which is what I'm more in contact with, uh, we would like to move into the direction of Kubernetes. Um, on the user side of things, uh, I think one thing that is gaining um, traction and interest, um, mainly also because of the reasons that, that Kenneth explained regarding how complex it is to install certain packages, is to, um, to support containers a little bit easier. And... Um, uh, and integrate that with uh, with with our HPC environment. Now that is not 100% cloud, uh, but those those are the let's say the um, um, the next steps that the, that we are uh, uh, the next steps we would like to take. Um, if you are thinking on having a full fledged multi tenancy. Uh, cloud kind of thing running on the big HPC systems. I haven't seen that as a priority right now, but that is increasing as well. So I cannot promise like we will support it for sure in the next system, but it's something that we definitely have on the, let's say on the, uh, on, on, on our view. Yeah, I, I believe also the impact of the user and, and workload that could make you change things depends on how much users are putting pressure on it. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. Yeah, okay. we have a lot of users that, uh, for good or for, for worse, they are more uh, HPC, um, APC focused. So, um, at the moment, I think the vast majority of time they are still, um, 
let's say traditional ones. Uh, but yeah, but as I mentioned, the uh, the pressure is increasing. Okay. We don't have Moving a fix. Here. Yeah. 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 Thank you. No problem. We don't have any other further questions, Damien. Thank you very much for your presentation. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Tick a dun, tick a dun, pump, pump, tick a dun, tick a dun, tick a dun, pump, pump, tick a dun, tick a dun, pump, pump, tick a dun, tick a dun.